How are you doing this Martin from Gardens for Life? So I'm going to show you what seeds we have and uh, what seeds we've gathered for the last few years and what new seeds we got this year as well and um, it's all really exciting for us because we can't wait to grow all of these well at least as many of these uh, seeds as we can. Uh, there's flowers, herbs, vegetables and some trees as well and there's even some fruits we're going to grow from seed as well and there is the big mystery box as you can see here there's some really special stuff in here some seeds and tubers and other bits and pieces and, and cutting so we're going to reveal that towards the end of the video and I'm going to also keep an eye on my laptop here as well because some of the seeds that I ordered haven't arrived yet and we still want to tell you about them anyway so before we get into all of these seeds, and it's going to be quite a journey, um, I wanted to let you know that we're going to do a big uh, February seed giveaway just before the growing season starts in March. And um, if you'd like to enter, we're going to send out 10 packets of vegetable and flower seeds to you. Uh, if you are the winner that's randomly selected, enter by simply emailing us back um, if you're already on the mailing list or join the mailing list on our website you just go to the main page and type in your email address there and click subscribe so one reason why we want to record this video um, to show you what we're trying to grow here in the midlands of Ireland in this cold temperate maritime climate and um, we also want to show, show you um, what has worked in our gardens and what what we're going to try of course we're a little bit daring with some of the plants that we're going to try to grow because they have a lower frost tolerance or they might need a bit more heat than or a bit more sunlight than what's um, available here in Ireland but we'll say we'll work with microclimates and we'll um, do our best to see if we can maybe get them to work and another thing is we'd like to um, organize a seed swap um, in around Roscommon town um, here in the midlands of Ireland everybody's welcome and we're going to announce a venue and a time and a date fairly soon and we're going to give you guys a chance to meet us as well the Gardens for Life uh, crew and we'll um, have a chat if you want uh, about anything to do with gardening or no dig mulch gardening or seeds or plants for that matter and we're going to bring most of these seeds here uh, that we're going to show you in this um, video and in fact we're going to bring them all and we don't mind actually sharing some of them even if you don't have any seeds to bring but the idea with a seed swap is that you bring what you have and if you have too many of some things you can actually swap those for others that you're looking for um, so that's actually a great way for the local community to get to know each other and seed swaps are a bit like a repair cafe you get to save money but also you get to exchange um, real value like uh, seeds that you have collected yourself in the garden from your own seed saving and um, the heirloom varieties as well the old um, proper varieties that aren't that you can't actually buy in a shop and um, that's one of the things that we'd like to also um, emphasize so let's get right into it okay so well we might as well start with the vegetable seeds which is all of these but we're not going to talk about every single one of those but we'll just run through what we have real quick um, we have grown some of these and the majority of them we have grown and some of them we didn't get around to yet but we're going to um, well certainly uh, if you have um, grown these before with success here in Ireland or in the UK please let us know um, of course the good old um, Autumn King um, carrots that's one of the carrots that we're going to be growing um, as you can see we do like to buy quite large bags of seed so we have plenty to share and we'll have some left over as well at the end of the year um, we have the Northern Extra Sweet that's the corn we've been growing from Scotland has a shorter ripening time this is technically a vegetable of course it's um, rhubarb, Claskin Perpetua 
and it's one that can be harvested any time of the year, even after midsummer, because the oxalic acid does not travel back down through the stalk. So it's a very special one. We've been growing 200 of them so far, and we've got them out there, and we're going to repot them so that we can plant them out into our new garden. Well, some of them anyway. Um, here's some Nantes carrots. Mind you that some of these packets of seeds are rather old, so some of them are two or three years old, but some of them should work. The, the majority of them will work fine. A lot of them are from last year and the year before. Uh, beetroot, Voltari. That was a reliable one. Florence fennel, that's the one we made a video about, seed saving. Very good, uh, even if you don't harvest a bulb, you can um, just take the leaves for to make a tea for if you have um, a sore stomach, for example, uh, or digestive issues. And you can also take this, the um, seeds themselves from the top of the plants where the flowers are in autumn. And you can dry those and bring them in to your cooking as well. Um, these are parsnip seeds. Which one is that? Jern, Jernsey. So we'll have to grow parsnips. We've never actually grown parsnips before. And we're going to try it for the first time in this year, 2020. So um, wish us luck with that one. Turnips, same thing. We just never got around to growing turnips. We have been expanding our gardens sufficiently now that we can actually grow some of these vegetables. We'll have the space for it now. Um, top Milan, that's the one that's pink on top and white on the bottom, I believe. Um, plenty of other packets of seeds here. Beetroot, more Voltardi. Um, a lot of these seed packets come from various different companies. We like to order seeds from all sorts of different companies. This is from uh, Seedaholic, which uh, is a cottage industry, a small family business, which is actually based in um, County Galway on the west coast of Ireland. So please check them out. They're awesome. They got like 4,000 different seeds on their website, which is, sounds crazy, but it's true. And uh, mostly vegetable and flower seeds. They don't really have any tree seeds, I don't think, but um, yeah, seedaholic.com, so that's the kind of packet you get, and you get, uh, let me see here, for example, you get like each of the packets of seeds actually comes on a, a little, um, just a page that has the picture of the plant and all the instructions and everything about it printed, so it's really good customer service and they're really cheap as well. Um, so we got beetroots, we love beetroots, we've been growing them for so long now, every year. Um, Colorabi, first year, last year. If you guys are following us on Facebook, you will have seen that we've grown a Colorabi about that size. Literally, like it's it's quite a substantial one, about 2 kilos in size. And um, Colorabi, um, let me see here, Delicacy, white and purple. Uh, these are seeds from Tim Harland that I got when they were over here at the permaculture gathering and um, these are Nepalese pepper we haven't grown them successfully just yet but I got also got some uh, new seeds from last year from a friend from uh, London just or in England and um, more beetroot seeds so if you guys need beetroot please come to our um, seed swap we've got loads of them as you can see what have we got here? Oh yeah, rhubarb that we gathered ourselves from our own plants. Um, this would be a mixed variety, of course. It's openly open pollinated, so it's not the Glasgow Perpetual. And uh, these rhubarb plants we've had for the last eight years. We moved them from our allotment and then to our house that we rented, to another house that we rented, and then again three years ago to the house we bought here. So these, these rhubarb stools have been moved quite a number of times and transplanted. So um, yeah, no, these should do really well. We're going to grow some of them just for the fun of it this year. And we have, um, let's see here, uh, Detroit 2 is another, um, it's like Detroit Globe is usually a beetroot. And it's um, quite a good one. We've had it before. Aubergines right here um licorice that's the packet uh here we've grown a lot of these actually successfully licorice seeds are really hard to get 
if you want to get um, more than 10 or 20 uh, we got a packet of a hundred and um, they're not not that easy to find now in, in bulk and uh, we've grown them successfully and um, they have really nice sweet roots of course you don't want to kill the tree to harvest the root but you just take a little bit of it when you can dig it up in uh, under the wood chips uh, under the mulch you can dig up a bit of it and just cut it off with a secretaire's and just you can actually just clean it wash it and nibble away at it and it's actually really sweet and it's a really refreshing flavor and uh, that's all uh, children used to get they never used to have um, chocolate and Haribo and all the rest uh, all the things you can get now they used to have only um, just licorice root really was the sweet for them um, well, let me have a look here I'll try not to mix these up because it took us about three days to, to actually um, separate all of these well that was root vegetables well some of mostly anyway now we have something salads greens brassicas here's red peppers all these ones we got from knock vicar uh, from a seed swap there and um, the spinach uh, winter giant tons of seeds of that too that's very successful and um, let's see here New Zealand spinach thanks to Frank from Belgium with his vegetable garden I'll give you his address uh, for his website uh, and put it into the uh, just in the description below um, New Zealand spinach green and red red is a really rare one we also are swapping tubers every year as well so which is really cool here is the red one they're, they're odd looking seeds aren't they um, brassica purple sprout and broccoli as you can see there's no shortage of seeds here um, what else have we got here oh Portuguese kale a lot of you guys would be interested in that because we can't stop talking about it but it is great we um, We've been growing it for three years now and some of the older plants have become lanky and they've fallen over and grown straight again so they've basically grown it at, in, into something that's not really very productive anymore but we'll see how it goes we might start planting replanting new plants next year and you can do that uh, in succession you just take down the old plants if you like and then you can use the the actual uh, walking or the the stock of the, the tree collards as they call them uh, of the Portuguese kale you can use the stock as a walking stick and that's why they're also known as walking stick kale so uh, mustard let me see here lots of sprouting strout, sprouting mixes carrots uh, chantonay red cord and here's another packet of the Portuguese kale that's actually the original packet that's the one I was looking for 10 grams of seeds that's a lot of seeds uh, check it out that's what they look like and there's even some instructions on the back which kale which brassica have you seen where you can plant it any time of the year and you can harvest it any time of the year all 12 months not many vegetables like that so keep that one in mind that's a really good one uh, any of the perennial kales or um, Portuguese kale anyway so lots of rocket salad and more rocket or arugula so we'll put these back in here now the beans and peas we have tons of them well actually it isn't technically a bean or a pea but it's in the legume family there is um, some Siberian pea shrub seeds very few left we have grown it before but not quite as successfully as we had hoped we're going to give it another try and we're going to um, grow it as a chicken forage that's the ideal way to grow it anyway so um, let me see here you see beans bush beans lots of rare stuff as you can see uh, wild peas here forage peas are really good ones I'd recommend growing those I got them originally from, I believe it was um, the which place was it? 
future forests in um, Cork we got these forage peas from a long time ago and we've been growing them ever since for the last five years now and we've been able to keep the seeds um, every year and uh, yeah really good pea really robust and reliable and not as sweet as the other ones but um, definitely worth growing um, this is tuberous pea which we have been growing very rare seeds to get again from our friend from um, Belgium thanks to Frank um, now let me have a look here these are runner bean scarlet emperor plenty of seeds in it um, more runner beans that we harvested ourselves this year uh, last, sorry last year and some older runner beans which still might work we're going to give them a go and some other bits and pieces now We've nearly come gone through the vegetables now. Oh yeah, here's some uh, black oats that we're going to bring to PJs. If you're watching this PJ, these are for you. Uh, black oats, they can be grown as a cover crop or a green manure. And um, they're also good for forage as well. And um, we got these off um, one of our big orders that we got from Poland one time uh, years ago and um, we don't really have a use for them so i think you'll do very well there at the um, eco project now we have a few more we will we move on to some more something more fun than vegetables i guess but uh, vegetables aren't too bad these are pumpkins runner beans they're in envelopes because we actually gathered these ourselves wood mallow that's a really good one. I'm gonna. I'm looking forward to growing that now. Growing more of them. Uh, fennel, Florence. Uh, the red curry pumpkin. We've got lots of those. If you've seen our video on um, growing pumpkins, the Halloween video, um, that's that's these seeds basically. That's where the pumpkins came from. Uh, we still have one or two left actually. Here's one. I don't actually know what variety that is. If you know, let us know in the comments. And um, we have seeds for all of the pumpkins that we have uh, featured in that video anyway. If you're looking for seeds, please be feel free to um, turn up at our um, seed swap. So that's more red curry. We have lots of different editions of red curry squash. Some uh, older some not so these mostly are from last year 2019 so they'll work fine in 2020 red russian kale there's a lot of seed in that if you've seen the seed saving video for kale or brassicas even um i, I have to show this to you one second now. you can't really see it very well here but maybe you can get an appreciation for it there must be about 150 or 200 grams worth of seeds just this many and um, so if you're looking for red russian kale seeds um, you can take some of these um, great mullen we have lots of seeds for great mullen as well and we have more red curry that's going to be a good one and we're that's our favorite pumpkin to grow it grows lots of little pumpkins on one vine so you can portion it out very easily instead of having one giant pumpkin to deal with and it'll only end up going off anyway um, you can uh, grow red curry pumpkin uh, uh, with very little space you don't need much space you can grow it in a polyculture and you can even um, store it really well because it's not it's a very um a, a very fleshy very nutty uh, dry pumpkin so it's it's really good for making soup and likes and you can uh, do all sorts of cooking with it but it stores really well because there isn't much moisture in it that's all the vegetable seeds i think there's probably going to be a few more scattered amongst these boxes of seeds here but um what will we do next we could do you want to go through the flowers now just bear in mind that some of these are actually multifunctional plants because they are not necessarily going to be just herbs or just flowers or just vegetables or even fruits some of them will have multiple functions and even insectary plants as well 
plants that um, attract beneficial insects um, and even medicinal plants as well we have plenty of those here we'll start off with um, a flagship medicinal plant really that should be in every garden almost but it mightn't be too easy to grow here um, the Oregon grape root that's a natural antibiotic it's a really good one we're going to start growing it now this year in 2020 and we have um, plenty of chamomile seeds uh, as you can see there chamomile is really good this is Greek chamomile and um, as far as I remember uh, German chamomile is actually better for the likes of um, a flu or something like that but all of the chamomiles are soothing and relaxing and they are uh, very good for the digestive system as well and um, certainly a little bit antibacterial and antiviral as well uh, Echinacea that's uh, the purple Echinacea that we gathered from our own uh, garden here's some lupin seeds this came from our giant blue lupin in the front garden so we're going to try and grow some of those we also are growing um, 50 mixed color lupins at the moment they're still in the greenhouse now and they're still surviving the winter so they might even be growing just a little bit because the leaves haven't actually come off them um, we're going to be repotting them though soon this is corn flour this could be blue and mixed colors we have um, lots of different bits and pieces I don't really want to be uh, going through them all now because the video would be about five hours long uh, motherwort is a medicinal valerian is a good one to grow it is a medicinal plant that you can make a tincture from you can um, uh, take it in the evening time just before going to sleep and it'll help you sleep give you a better quality of sleep or a deeper sleep and um, borage is a really good flower for uh, the insects especially the pollinators and it's also a medicinal plant in that the leaves and the flowers can be made into a tea and um, uh, drank for to clear out your respiratory system or the, it's a bronchial uh, healer healing herb and uh, borage is also known as star flower because it's a, a blue flower with five petals so um, we have more chamomile nasturtiums we have so many nasturtiums we can't even we don't even seed them anymore they just have seed them uh, in parts of our garden foxgloves where we have them if you're looking for them you can grow them they're a beautiful plant and really good for the insects and pollinators but it's poisonous so we'd rather not have it around especially when we have people to visit or if we have um, children around the place as well so you wouldn't want to be growing poisonous plants now even if they look nice um, if that's the case uh, vipers bugloss is a, a plant or flower it's a, quite a nice flower but I forget what it does poppies we have loads of different types of poppies yarrow is a good one yarrow the wild variety is actually it grows um, in UK and in Ireland and all over Europe uh, wild and it's a white flower it's also known as globe flower because it has it's a bit like a, a round kind of a, um, a center and um, it's known as soldier's woundwort because you can actually put a chew it up the leaf and put it on a wound and it'll actually heal it uh, or it'll, at least it will clot the blood nearly instantly so it's handy for that and you can also leave the leaves in a salad and it'll actually help to give you more circulation by widening the blood vessels slightly so it will help with that marshmallow is another plant we've got uh, we've been growing it for a few years now the leaves are really good for um, um, soothing the throat when you have a rough throat in the winter time and uh, are dry even a dry, a dry throat and uh, there is mucilage in the leaves and you can make it as a drink it as a tea and uh, of course the roots used to be made into um, actual marshmallows before the industrialization of the food system uh, let me see here what else have we got more nasturtiums angelica is another medicinal plant the seeds look quite different um, I have to look that up I cannot remember what it does Arch Angelica is the Latin name um, 
This is a mixture of wood mallow, calendula or marigold and great mullen. So we've gathered these seeds from the front garden in our other house. If you're interested, please come to our seed swap. We were uh, always um, keen to uh, swap seeds or, or just give them away as well, if we have a surplus of course. And we do, we have plenty of them. Um, as long as we can encourage people to grow their own, uh, start their own gardens and everything, we're very happy. Uh, more barge seeds. These might be a little old at this point. They're 2016, I think, or 2017. Um, but there's plenty of them, so I think scattering some of these will do uh, wonders to your garden. Uh, great mullen. More great mullen seeds. You can never have enough of them. Cornflower blue. Uh, Dahlias. Uh, mixed colours. I have grown these last year and they're they grow really well they grow into a little uh, plant i've grown them in one liter pots and they even flowered already in the first year in a one liter pot a little bit smaller than a little bit smaller than this and um, the, the actual tubers are inside the pot and you can keep those uh, under the wood chip mulch you can don't have to dig up uh, the dahlia tubers in the winter Normally people would, um, would using conventional gardening in that um, just digging and tilling the soil and weeding it and keeping the soil naked and bare or barren, um, unprotected from the elements including the sun and the frost in the winter, you kind of have to dig up the tubers because they will freeze in the soil and then thaw and um, turn to mush. But in the wood chips, in my, our experience, you don't have to do that with dahlias tubers or even any of the tubers. We've been growing dozens of different types of tubers and uh, they've been fine. It's just that if the soil life wakes up, or when the soil life wakes up around March or April, it's probably best to dig up some of them that will probably be consumed. Some of them, um, for example, ochas and um, yakon are best um, dug up and um, grown in a pot into a seedling and then plant it out again but the dahlias is, we'll see how they go more valerian and we got hollyhock we've been growing a lot of hollyhocks now lately and this uh, is um, chatters mix there is also we have pink and peach oh, here are the seeds that's the peach one we got those as a gift actually because we, we someone that bought something from us on ebay uh, we checked out what they're selling and uh, we bought some of their stuff and they sent us this as a gift. So um, we like to give people um, gifts too. We're going to actually what's in the, the mystery box uh, with the question mark on it. You'll see what's in it uh, in a minute. And I'm going to show you some of the things that we, we like to send out uh, little gift packets of seeds. Um, something similar to that. Um, for, for example, um, maybe some seeds from flower seeds or vegetable seeds or that type of thing, and also um, some herbs. So, um, more angelica, hyssop. Um, this is hyssop seeds, and these are the calendula marigold again. They overwinter in our garden actually, they're supposed to be an annual, but they've been surviving uh, if it's a mild winter. And um, they've been growing absolutely huge. Even last winter wasn't as mild as this one, and they have survived out there. And we have very early uh, calendula flowers that are growing to a big, like enormous uh, scale, maybe about that size when they're only supposed to be that size after growing for a few months. Um, jet black hollyhocks, one of the favorites. Um, Echinacea, uh, white swan. So white echinaceas are nice, but we like the purple ones better. There's the purple ones. Uh, hollyhocks, linseed. Let me see here. That's wild roses. Oriental poppy. We've grown some of those. The clot of gold. Um, Achillei. That's the uh, yarrow. And we also have the rubra. That's the red yarrow. Red and pink, actually. Nifolia is the... 
um, red hot poker so you can get some seeds for that if you like and grow it yourself uh, don't always have to go by root um, division you can actually grow plants from seeds as well uh, sometimes it's easier uh, giant hyssop pink poppy a cowslip uh, more chamomile some sunflowers from the sunflower fest uh, in Northern Ireland uh, hollyhock basil it's not really a flower is it uh, wildflowers hollyhock um, we have some wildflower mixes as well sunflower dwarf I don't actually know what these are but I've, I've gathered them uh, three years ago and I can't remember what they are they're not a dandelion but they're something similar and more calendula that's the flowers so there is also more flowers that we got all of our new seeds are in the mystery box of course uh, well a lot of the new seeds anyway and and here's some other seeds that have just arrived after I had finished making that video um, these are from green vegetable seeds um, thanks to Klaus up uh, near Sligo um, he's from the organic center in County Leitrim um, uh, you should check out uh, greenvegetableseeds.com you can see it here they have a nice selection of uh, seeds some very rare stuff as well I'm getting some uh, Mizuna that's the mustard green and some tree spinach I'm very excited to grow, grow that and dwarf spinach excuse me dwarf uh, french beans safari uh, nero it's just kale or dinosaur kale is also known as some other courgettes another type of courgettes um, some beetroots different colors and different shapes and some celeriac giant prag i've never grown celeriac before but it's a wonderful vegetable for the for making soups okay what will we do next we'll do how about tree seeds um monkey puzzle seeds i don't know if they're viable but here they are anyway that's what they look like they're really dear on ebay they're about 50 cent each and i don't think these are actually viable we'd love to grow some monkey puzzles and um when you open them up there isn't much in the seed but um we give them a try anyway we have some put into a tray with some uh soil and we're stratifying them there in the winter um, we've got what's this this is trees now so actually these seeds here have come from uh, let me see here these seeds have actually come from we got them as a gift from uh, Kate uh, Kate and Alan um, in a, a castlery or body harness um, thanks very much these came from uh, the Martin Crawford uh, Forest Garden in Devon in southern England and we have strawberry tree I've also ordered a packet of those as well um, ourselves uh, so we're going to grow the strawberry tree which is seems to be a really good tree to grow it's robust enough and it has an edible fruit although rather boring in flavor I've heard and it actually is native to County Cork I believe or Kerry and um, that's where it comes from it's all over the world now um, let me see here I I honestly don't know what what this is but it is it is a tree seed um, it's, a, it's a type of lime tree anyway yeah it is it's actually a lime tree uh, here's some black locust we have grown these before people think they're extremely invasive in reality they don't seed here they don't actually trees don't go to seed in Ireland it's way too cold for that and um, they grow really fast and it's good firewood but it is a bit spiky so but it's good for hedging uh, more black locusts we have some little bit of honey locusts we have beech tree seeds that we've gathered ourselves um, apple and pear tree seeds and we've grown some apple trees ourselves from seed this is uh, some sweet chestnuts from Italy we're going to give it them a go and we're also going to show you more of something similar tree seeds from in the mystery box but I won't give too much away 
<laughs> I don't want to keep you all day either. Uh, right, that's those. Um, there's some fig tree seeds here. Um, what's this? Fruits. Well, this more. That's just an empty packet of Gaskin Perpetual. There's a Northern Bayberry. Um, more seeds from Martin Crawford's Food Forest, or Forest Garden, I should say. 550 species of of plants he has in the two acre uh, forest garden now. It's 15 years old now, and he has um, uh, most of those plants are actually edible. And he does tours, and he has a really good book as well. You we should definitely have a look at it. Um, okay, grape seeds, service berry, barberry, uh, long raspberry. It's a mulberry actually, it's a, yeah, no, that's that's the black mulberry, and it's a long one. This is uh, hardy kiwi seeds, where we have some plants that we're going to grow cuttings uh, from. We're going to root them. This is Cape gooseberries, my favourite fruit actually, if only I had the room to grow it indoors. I need to build another greenhouse up the road on our, in our other garden. Um, more mulberry, uh, this is some wine grapes. Um, woodland strawberries going to grow those and I'm going to mix uh, we are also getting a lot of strawberries uh, which I'll have a look at now in a minute uh, here on uh, our laptop so I'll put these back in here we have herbs uh, nettles if you're looking for nettles, I know it would be probably unlikely that you do need them, but we have some seeds. We also can give you some rhizomes, uh, so let us know beforehand. Um, nettles are really useful. Um, of course, they're the bane in most people's existence is because they have too many of them and they don't know what to do with them, and they just sting you if you don't know what to do with them. So nettles are really good for soup. They're actually a cleansing tonic, especially in uh, springtime. Um, you can um, use them as an antihistamine as well. Um, lots of different uses. They're a urinary tract medicine. I think it is um, it is the seeds or the roots that are the urinary tract medicine. I can't remember. You need to look that up. But nettles are an extremely useful plant. You can get two or three cuttings uh, in the year as well. So um, some stevia, uh, coriander or cilantro. Uh, dill, chives, we have garlic chives as well, uh, dill, these the smell is incredible, um, wild thyme, lovage is a really good herb for the um, making soup all winter long, you can dry it and you can also um, use it in cooking otherwise, but it's a really good herb to have in the garden, it's perennial as well. Uh, lemongrass, we've got lots of lemongrass seeds, I remember that. Um, rare enough to get them. I mean, we're looking for bamboo seeds as well. If you have any, if you have bamboo, uh, please let us know. Uh, we'd like to get some rhizomes and we'll swap you for whatever we have, whatever you want. Um, uh, St. John's Wort, we also have uh, uh, cat mint, we also have oregano. Uh, check out the amount of oregano seeds in that. That's a lot of oregano. But you can also do root division as well and just split plants like mint as well. Uh, let's see here. We've got thyme. We've got lots of thyme. Although we never have time because we're always lagging behind, or lagging behind with our videos and trying to edit them. Rosemary, although best grown from cuttings. Um, peppermint, also best grown from root cuttings. We'll bring some um, mint rhizomes um, to the seed swap. If anyone's interested, we'll give them to you. Um, we have lots of different types of mint. There's curly parsley, more parsley. Um, here's something special. A big packet of lemongrass. Uh, let me see here. Cherville. And what is that? 
in English. I don't know. I forget. If you can figure that out, it's probably shareable. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, it's just a German seed packet. So I can remember dill, basil. We've got bush basil, comfrey, um, chives, garlic chives, more garlic chives, parsley, Egyptian mint, lemon balm. How much lemon balm is there? Ooh, there's a bit of lemon balm in that. I might actually grow some of that. Uh, lemon basil, loads of seeds. So we've got a few different types of basil. Spearmint, we have that as a root anyway. Dill, dill, peppermint. Oh, that's that's the herbs anyway. So no shortage of herbs. We also have way more in the garden. But this is just what seeds we still have left over. Okay. Okay. What have we got here? Mm, we have incredible vegetable seeds. Hang on a second now. There's too much here. <laughs> this is the exciting stuff now. Oh my god. Um, hang on a second. We got a lot of different stuff here. Incredible vegetables that Kurod UK. We have swapped some seeds for some mashua, and um, I believe it was just mashua actually that she wanted. And um, thanks very much for doing the swap with us. And it's definitely worth a mention because they have a lot of awesome uh, vegetables, especially um, uh, perennial vegetables they sell. And uh, you should definitely take a look. I wish they were more active on their videos, but it's Caucasian spinach, and we have. What else do we have here? The Latin names now, so I don't recognize them. Uh, perennial leeks and uh, Babington leek as well. So that's also a perennial as well. So um, that's exciting stuff. We're going to get those going. We're also going to do um, um, Egyptian onions. I'm going to try and see if I can get some of those. Uh, we have a big packet a big packet of incredibly big packet of pawpaw seeds which I the smell of them the unbelievable smell of them which we got sent in from America and it took a lot of postage and a lot of time to get here and we've been keeping them stratifying them in our fridge at a really cold temperature maybe 4 degrees Celsius uh, and then moist uh, with a bit of moisture in the bag um, we're going to grow pawpaws, which are cold weather um, mangoes, if you want to call them that. And they're also known as poor man's banana. I'm not sure why. If you know why, let us know in the comments. Um, we're going to uh, grow these, and they're supposed to have a good flavor and grow in even colder climates as well. It's kind of a tropical fruit or subtropical fruit that you're able to grow in colder climates, in no more northern climates. So I'm going to put that back in the fridge in a minute. I'll put it over here for a minute. Um, let's see. Whoa, this is something now. Um, this is the package we got from... Uh, let me think. Who was that from? Cedarholic. That is. And uh, check out, we spent a lot of money with Cedarholic this time. Uh, we got a lot of different seeds. Well, I think we got about 50 packets of seeds this time. I'll show you the list of seeds here now. Um, let me see. Where is it? Check it out. Let me see here. There you go. All those seeds. I don't know if you can read that. I'm sure you can't, but just to give, give you an idea of how many different seeds we got. Um, we got, as you can see, it's really neat and really uh, generous enough to have all that information ready to go. And they really know their stuff about seeds. There is a new type of pumpkin that we're going to grow. Autumn Crown. Going to give it a go. Glaskin Perpetual. More rhubarb. Uh, Lovitch. 
plenty of it. Good King Henry is a, a wild edible plant, uh, great for foraging. You should definitely incorporate that in your forest gardens and it will grow like uh, weeds. Well, that's what people call it anyway, when it turns up in their gardens. Just because it's a plant that they don't know what to use with and usually um, weeds aren't really weeds. They're just um, plants that are not useful to you, I guess. Um, we have, we're also going to do a lot of salad mixes. Uh, I'll show them to you here. There's some. We're going to do um, lots of salad mixes, like um, pick and, or what is it, cut and come again in salad mixes. And we're going to um, grow them in our plastic crates that we're going to fill with uh, compost and a bit of uh, volcanic rock dust. Here's another. We have bought the big salad mix. It's 10 euro for six big packets of seed. All of these which is really cheap and here is an extra one so that's plenty of salad mixes where we have no shortage of uh, okay so sherbel I'd say that other one I didn't know that German packet must have been sherbel um, a big packet of echinacea fresh echinacea seeds too important not to buy fresh seeds, even though we have tons of seeds of them. Uh, as you can see here, it's what we have actually gathered out in our own garden is nearly the same as the packet that we're getting. But these are from last year, and these are from 2018. We don't like to take a chance on something um, that we're definitely want going to grow. So we'll see. It's 130 seeds. I'd be doing well growing 130 Ganesha plants. Uh, more salad mix and there is the blue cone flower or star flower it's a birch we're also getting some broccoli uh, little leprechaun lettuce uh, miner's lettuce which is actually I think that's a type of uh, sorrow um, Okay, we have fresh autumn king seeds. Um, we have some carrot chantonnay too. And you look at the amount of seeds there's in there. There's, there's a lot of different seeds here. Uh, purple Milan, radish, white icicle. We have some onions. We're also going to grow some onions from seed, so we get sets for next year. Uh, some of these. Florence, uh, this is Bedfordshire Champion. Um, black Spanish round beads, or radish actually. Um, standard radish, sparkler is the name. And some good old big packet of Black Tuscany or Nero dinosaur kale three different names that there is for it a really good robust uh, kale plant or kale variety to grow a little bit bitter so if you don't like it bitter grow the red Russian uh, kale or the Portuguese kale it's a lot more mild and uh, but this is obviously more healthy and the more bitter I guess the more vitamin A is in it I think that's what it is so that's our massive order from Cedarholic um, and we're really happy to support them because they're a local business and uh, it's really important to support them especially because they're good at what they do and they're very mindful of it as well they give you good value for money we bought all these seeds here I think it was only 60 quid 50 or 60 quid for all of these seeds here and there is a lot of packets of seed here at least 40 or 45 packets of seed so put those in the box now we move on to the more mysterious stuff now if you want to see the, the order from Poland check out the uh, stamps look at that there's the stamps they're nearly falling off the packet actually thank god the packet got here so this stuff here now is actually really rare 
some extremely rare stuff that you can't even buy anywhere in the world almost but but not in certainly not in Europe um, although some of it is actually nearly extinct this is a plant here now that's called Apios Priciana I've looked everywhere looking for seeds for these and there is one guy in America I think it's Mountain Herb Gardener that has them sometimes once a year but they're still very rare and um, this is a tuber that I got hoping to grow these bigger and then hopefully they'll grow seeds eventually in a few years time this is um, really expensive it's called uh, Priciana because I guess it's um, not because it's pricey but also because it's known as um, uh, in North America where the plant is native and it's almost extinct in the wild now which is why it's really important to bring it back and make people aware of the plant and have people grow it in their own gardens of course that'd be nice um, this is known as uh, traveler's delight because when you find it you know that you have you're sorted for food it's like um, apios like a ground nut but it is perennial and it grows very big after 10 years i think it grows to about that size and uh, it is i mean it's its flowers are really beautiful as well and uh, really good for the pollinators as well so you can um, expect uh, not to be able to find this plant anywhere on the internet other than one guy in poland that's selling these and this is only a one year old plant and it's about 30 euro for that tuber one little bitty tuber and i'm hoping it's going to grow it's a bit of a gamble we'll see how it goes we have the other apios the um the apios americana um it's not as rare and it grows a bit like a sausage link if you've seen the video we have a video on Yakon and uh, Apios. You can um, have a look at that and, and check out me harvesting one. And it's quite fun and you can cut it off and just grow one of each individual tuber into a new plant. So, so it's a lot easier to propagate than this one because this one stays in one tuber. So you have to propagate it by seed. So wish us good luck with that one. And if you have Apios Priciana seeds, please let us know. Um, something extremely rare in Europe I've been looking for it everywhere and Martin Crawford does sell it on his web shop um, down in Devon but the problem is it's all sold out um, American Elder American Elder is a plant that is actually same as the European Elder it is it grows blackberries and it has white flowers but the difference is that the uh, American Elders flowers have a bit of a scent of um, um, vanilla elderflower wine and elderflower cordial are really worth making and we make them almost every year well worth it but these are um, one just elderflower cuttings or elder sorry elderberry tree cuttings and um, uh, one of them is from the rocky mountains and the other variety is from florida so I'm really pleased to have these and I'm going to grow these into many more and I'm hoping to be able to offer them to you guys after a while maybe in two or two years time um, maybe even next year already we'll see how it goes and um, because they're just inaccessible uh, I, I really tried to find them the, the American Elder for the last two years and I can't find any in Europe look I put this these cuttings into willow water along with willow sticks that were already in the water for a long time and check it out i cannot believe it the, the the actual cutting has rooted already in the water so it's it's doing really well i think the rooting hormone actually also scarifies the cutting a little bit but i'm going to plant these now soon uh, tomorrow when i get home from work now what have we got here there's more things from the fellow from poland um this is actually another this is actually a second guy from Poland uh, but this is the same source for the the American elder cuttings and um, the tin foil I guess was wrapped around the tubers and the cuttings to stop the frost because in Poland it's really cold this time of the year I'd say it could be minus 20 even um, it's hard to get plants from there in the winter they don't sell them until March or April because they're it'll be frozen um, check it out we got some 
something really rare uh, if you've ever had a bad back and you have tried everything to fix it and to bring down pain um, you've probably come across a plant called devil's claw you can get the cream for that in health food shops like holland and barrett um, but these are the seeds for devil's claw it's a desert plant and we might grow it and try and keep it frost free and then we'll um, plant it into the wallapini our 12 month warm greenhouse the underground pit greenhouse that we're going to build soon um, it's going to be an interesting project and that's devil's claw here's um, some uh, potatoes from the canarian islands they actually look better uh, when they're fully grown this time of the year they wouldn't look great but uh, that's going to be an awesome one to grow they're kind of orange inside um, very exotic looking these are apios americano as you can see that's the usually they have strings between the tubers and then there's another tuber and the mother tuber grows bigger and bigger as far as we can see we've been growing them for one year now and we don't have enough of them yet so we'll see how we done um, these are apios oh excuse me um, olocus um, they're like a potato uh, very similar to a potato and really hard to find in Europe uh, my friend Frank in Belgium reckons mostly because they are um, hard to grow in Europe they're they're a plant that doesn't really like to be in Europe but if they can grow them in Poland right we can grow them in Ireland I think the Irish climate is suited for all these tubers really well we've grown tubers much better or much bigger and more successful more, more successfully than our friends in um, continental Europe because they had the heat waves of 2018 was devastating for them um, some of them have lost 50% of their species in their gardens because of drought and uh, it was just 45 degrees and and between 40 and 45 degrees and no rain for weeks so um, yeah so so these are olocus and finally we got some really hard to find and if you have some and you want to share them with us please let us know and we'll give you something else in return some other tubers that we have um, yeah so take a look at those hopefully we can multiply these and then offer them to you guys at some point but there be um, quite the exotic tuber why bother growing these when potatoes are everywhere and um, these are smaller well actually potatoes are quite um, fragile when you think about it they seem to have a lot of disease problems that all of these other tubers don't have and a lot of natural predators and the blight of course as well we don't have any of those issues with any of our other tubers so um, yeah so that's the order from Poland I'll put these over here and we have wiggly willow we have corkscrew a curly corkscrew willow we got some of those this year and we had some last year as well and we have some of these on our website for sale now at six euro for ten no sorry six euro for seven cuttings but uh, we're going to grow these into plants and then we'll offer them to you at about 10 euro for a one year old plant or 20 euro for a two year old plant and in the garden centers they're more than double that they're very expensive as a plant but uh, yeah you can see here they've been in the in the willow water also of course they are willows but um, they are rooting already they are sprouting so we're going to grow these. These would be a nice tree to grow in any garden or in a hedge as well. Very ornamental tree. Um, what else have we got? Which one should we do next? Here is some strawberry tree seeds. Along with the strawberry tree seeds, I'm actually getting some uh, ginkgo uh, tree seeds as well. The ginkgo tree, ginkgo biloba, is from Japan. And it grows... Uh, very well in Ireland because Ireland is a similar climate to Japan and uh, it is the maiden hair tree it's actually one of the oldest trees alive and it's the only tree that survived or the only plant that survived the Holocaust when the atom bombs were fired and um, it is uh, its leaves are actually a very good um, it's known as memory tea 
uh, or memory tree I should say because the leaves make a tea that will uh, increase the circulation to your brain uh, more oxygen to the brain means you have a better memory you can use your utilize your brain cells better so it's a medicinal tree and we're going to grow it it's really hard to find in Ireland as a tree itself the original tree not a dwarf variety of some sort and um, we're going to grow them and we're going to offer them to you guys if you're interested um, or you can get some seeds from us if you like if they arrive before the seed swap they haven't arrived yet so otherwise i'd show them to you here now um, we have also got some willows uh, this is um, a pink flowering willow from japan as well these come from our greenhouse and we only have one plant at the moment, but we've been propagating it already for one year. So uh, maybe we can offer those to you too uh, during the year this year. Pink flowering willows. It's quite a beautiful flower and very unusual. Um, we have more vegetable seeds here too. Um, French breakfast, radish seeds. Uh, climbing French bean. Blue lake is the variety. Um, cabbage, Durham Early, that's a really good one for making salads without, or coleslaw, without cutting it. We have tomato, Black Prince, which is the one that could be grown outdoors as far as we know in Ireland. Uh, because we don't have a big enough greenhouse, we only have a greenhouse in our nursery, but not in the vegetable garden. We're going to get around eventually now, going to build another greenhouse, probably before we build the Wallapini. But it's all projects that we're going to do. Uh, cauliflower all year round. And leek. Uh, Blue de Soles. That's another um, another vegetable order from Premier Seeds Direct. And here we have uh, seeds that we swapped with people. We, all, we have plenty of seeds that we actually swapped with people and tubers as well. Um, we just gave them some oka or mashua or whatever or even Jerusalem artichokes and they gave our yakon and they gave us uh, some tubers or some um, some rare seeds as well and sometimes we also got some uh, uh, actual sweet chestnut seeds from Hoth and some from the botanic gardens as well so um, sweet chestnut seeds we got from people we also have some tiger nuts here let me show them to you which we have grown before but they kind of got lost in the garden there they are tiger nuts and we're going to propagate those the plant looks a bit like grass like the ordinary kind of uh, field grass but uh, it's ornamental as well so, and you can eat the, the actual tubers um, here we have some February orchid which is actually a blue flowering, I think it's blue, uh, flowering, um, kind of a low, not, not a tall growing, but a low growing uh, brassica. It's a kale that, that uh, is a bit like, uh, it's a bit ornamental, but you can eat the, lead, the, the actual flowers as well early in uh, February. So that would be a good early uh, food that grows even before the hunger gap as well. Um, here we have some other seeds from happy green shop is the name of the place we have some galliardi aristana a blanket flower mix you see that there a blanket flower lots of different flowers um morning glory we have a few squash here as well that we've been actually recommended by a friend from brazil this is a squash called Corbica Maxima Squash Ambar is the name. It's a green squash with orange flesh. We've got a couple of seeds of those. We have some sweet pepper, white bell. A Nepalese pepper. Nepalese pepper. That's a really good one. Um, you eat the husk and the seed is inside. You can grow a new tree out of the husk. It's actually a delicacy. It's often served in... Uh, <laughs> really high-end restaurants as well um, more Echinacea white golden coneflower check that out that's a variety of Echinacea I'd say uh, Dahlias pink and we have some 
French Marigold, uh, yellow. Hollyhock, um, different color. Cornflower Cherry Brandy. Jacob's Ladder. I thought I'd get that because our son is called Jacob, so we'll um, try to grow those. And we got some free seeds as well. So, excuse me, labels, not seeds. Um, now, are you ready for the next thing? We're nearly there now, don't worry. Um, if you're still there, thanks for holding on this long. But the best thing is to come yet. These are most of the tree seeds that we got. Um, these are some Rhodiola rosea. It is, it is actually um, it is a, a medicinal plant for the nervous system, I believe it is. Um, so we're going to grow that. It's a perennial. So, um, now, here's the real mystery box. This is the good stuff. We got, um, this cost was about nearly 90 euro just for this little box where the seeds and we're really happy about getting them because we bought nice big packets of seeds and there's about 10 different varieties of seeds in it we even got this little cloth a travel cloth like um, made from uh, bamboo fiber uh, we got this as a present just as a gift that's cool we always appreciate that thanks very much this is holy basil seeds, or um, it's also known as um, Tulsi, Tulsi Rama. It's known as uh, Indian holy basil, or sorry, Indian basil or Thai holy basil. And uh, we always drink the tea, that we buy the tea dried from a, a herb shop uh, on the internet. And um, it's quite a soothing tea, it gives you a lot of energy. It supports the adrenal functions as well, and it helps the hormonal balance, reduces blood sugar, balances that, a whole host of benefits. And we got a packet of 10,000 seeds. We've been looking for these seeds for a long time and we couldn't get them. Now we have them. Um, and we're actually sending out a little packet of a, a free gift packet, a little packet of seeds of these uh, with every tuber order that we that comes in, so that we're sending out. and. Um, People really appreciate that. We also send out usually some radish seeds, something easy to grow as well. And um, oftentimes some flower seeds like mullen. We love to send out mullen seeds or rhubarb sometimes, or even chamomile. Um, oh gosh, these are all Latin names now. Um, let me see here, eucalyptus. So that's a, a snow eucalyptus seeds. So we'll, I will, I'll, I'll try to explain what they are. Uh, this one is cold hardy, so we'll try to grow eucalyptus here. Should be possible. If you're still watching, thanks very much for watching it all the way through. So that's the plan to try and grow all of these things in 2020. And if you have any, um, questions or if you have an interest in some of those plants please let us know contact us on our website or in the comments below and on youtube or on facebook or on our website and you can um, um, get some of these seeds if you like in our seed swap which we're going to organize soon as well so um, again thanks for watching and one last thing i wanted to tell you is that uh, we're also going to grow i have the laptop here we're going to be growing um, um, 11 or 12 new varieties of strawberries as well in a very unique way so stay tuned for that and some um, very funny color raspberries as well some uh, golden raspberries and some white ones and some orange ones as well just to fool the birds so they don't pick them all for before we can okay thanks for watching and um, I'll see you at the next video bye bye yeah.